give you any other description. And then say, afterwards, I was very weak, but with a monstrous appetite. And then I left my friend's homestead and returned to South Africa. Every step of the way, I seemed like a person reborn. It was a feeling that no words can describe. And when I asked my friend by letter afterwards, what was this God flesh? He said it had been the flesh of a Puana. Yes, sir. People who say that these things don't exist had better think again. They are tangible. They are smellable. And furthermore, they are edible if you are willing to take the risk. In Africa, we have an ancient custom whose existence many people deny today that anything that, aim, that claims to be a god should be eaten. There are places in Africa even now where if you are a spiritual person and you are sick, well, let me tell you what happened to me in the country today called Zaire. I got sick, sir. I was undergoing yet another of my seven initiations, and I fell sick from very bad running stomach. And I was so sick, everything that my friends, white friends and black friends could do, failed to help me. And then, one night, some of my teachers came to me and requested that since I was going to die, would I please allow them the honor of eating me after death? Now, say, I, it's a very good thing to be invited to a dinner, but not when you happen to be part of the menu. And I recovered so quickly that I escaped from that area in one of their ramshackle buses, and I never went back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fear can be a wonderful medicine sometimes, <laughs> and it was with me. Do you think, Credo, that those senses that you experience, that really heightened sense of everything, of oneness, of whatever, are the very senses that the Chittahuli have manipulated out of us? I do think. I do very much. They were, they were senses like, like no human being possesses. May I add, no human being possesses anymore. They, it was as if at one time, say, a voice was speaking in my head, a very amazing voice. And after that, my powers of prophecy were intensified. This is what I think. We human beings are holier and more wonderful than we think we are. And I feel we lost something at some time in the course of our development, or shall I say, in the course of our, our manipulation. Credo, this is fascinating information, um, uh, which I'm sure many people in the UFO research um, community will be uh, very, very interested in. That is that these grey extraterrestrials, or grey figures, whatever they are, don't actually really look like that. They're almost in disguise. Yes, sir, they are. And I will tell you why. Grey aliens have died in, in various parts of Africa. They have been killed, and they are very, very quick to recover the bodies of their friends, which 
have fallen out of their crashed spacecraft. But sometimes African Sangomas steal these bodies before they can be recovered. And believe me, sir, I have heard and I have seen that butchering a corpse of one of these creatures is extremely hard work. What you think is the skin of the creature is actually a tight-fitting costume that the creature is wearing. Under this, under this gray costume, the creature say, is pinkish white, like a freshly skinned animal, and its eyes are round with split pupils. These are goblins which the creature is wearing. Now, how do I know that? In order to dismember a creature like this, incidentally we call them mandindane in Zulu, which means the tormentors, the torturers. In order to dismember a creature like this, you need a brand new X from the trading store, a heavy X sharpened to a razor's edge in order to cut through the creature's skin. The creature's skin say, is not adhering to the flesh. You know, my skin is clinging to my flesh, yes? But the creature, there is a gap between the creature's flesh and its supposed skin. This is a material and not a skin. So the creature is actually wearing two garments. It's wearing a completely skin-tight garment which covers its entire body. And it is wearing an overall along these lines. Very often, there are no gloves. And here, to cut up a mandindani, you need very, very sharp iron. And you have got to be a strong person even to reach its flesh. But once you have cut through the cover, the close fitting covering, you can just open the whole thing and see the dead creature's flesh underneath it. Is it reptilian? Yes, sir. It is. I will tell you how the creature looks like without its gray skin. It is like certain types of tropical fish. It's like the, the belly of that type of fish that is fried in South Africa to make fish and chips. That gray, gray fish, that long gray fish. The texture of its real skin is like that. But the blood vessels are very close to the surface. In fact, not so long ago, Mr. Ike, right here in South Africa, Several hundred school children, some black, some colored, were terrorized by a creature they called Pinky Pinky, a creature which looked as if it had been skinned alive. That was a mantindarn without its skin or costume. It's interesting when you're talking about the, the black eyes of these greys um, being a cover for something, and then you have the stories of the men in black who seem to interact not very positively, to say the least, with people involved in UFO and UFO investigation and stuff. Um, and, and these men in black have these black goggle-like sunglasses, which are almost a mirror of the same. Exactly, sir. But let me tell you that over this, the last season, hundred years or so, the men in black have become westernized. 